Okay, thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chairman, first of all, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to briefly present at uh, today's conference an interesting legal solution in relation to the codification of family law and its implementation. In this context, I would like to address two topics in my presentation. On the one hand, the codification of the family law legislation, which was previously a separate law, and uh, on the other hand, the plans, objectives, and implementation of the regulation of non-marital forms of partnership. In this sense, the structure of the presentation is the following. Firstly, I will talk about the process of the incorporation of family law rules into the civil code. Next, the scope of personal protection in the family law book, and in particular, about registered partnership and de facto partnership. The new civil code was adopted in 2013 and entered into force on 15 March 2014. The adoption was preceded by 12 years of expert work. Among these, the 2008 expert proposal and the 2012 committee proposal should be highlighted by all means. The latter was prepared jointly by the Professional Steering Committee and the Codification Editorial Committee. Among the codification tasks related to the family law legislation, it is necessary to mention the head of panel of the Curia, András Kőrös, who not only led the team with his sacrificial work, but also participated in the drafting of the legislative provisions. I would also like to stress here that the experts involved in the codification of family law have done an outstanding, excellent job. The new family law regulation provided a comprehensive response to the theoretical and practical problems that had arisen until then, taking into account both international guidelines and domestic judicial practice. In the complex social relations of everyday life, the protection of the rights of spouses, family members, and especially children required complex and detailed regulation. During the preparatory work on the codification of the new civil code, the following question was raised as a matter of principle. Should the fundamental rules of family law be included in the civil code, or should they appear outside the civil code in a separate law? The question was raised whether or not family law was part of civil law. On the one hand, there was no dispute about it earlier either that family law was traditionally an integral part of private law since it is mostly persons with equal rights, spouses, partners, parents, children, who are in a relationship of co-dependence. On the other hand, several family law instruments are inseparably linked to classical areas of civil law. However, family law was previously regulated not by the Civil Code of 1959, but by a separate Act, Act 4 of 1952, on marriage, family, and guardianship in a family law act. Both in Hungarian jurisprudence and in legal practice, family law gradually became an independent field of law, separate from civil law, after the comprehensive codification of the Family Law Act. In the jurisprudence of some former socialist countries, there was also the view that family law, despite its special characteristics, should be included in civil law. But the independent legal status of family law was not questioned in Hungarian jurisprudence, at least not until the 1990s. Initially, at the time of the drafting of both the Family Law Act and the former Civil Code, the main feature that distinguished family law from civil law was that while civil law basically regulates property relations and only secondarily personal relations, the opposite is true for family law. It basically regulates personal relations and only secondarily property relations related to them. This aspect of the distinction between family law and civil law is clearly no longer to, uh, true today. 
The importance of property relations has increased significantly not only in society, but also in the lives of spouses and families, and this has also affected the relationship between family law and civil law. The legislator took a clear position on this issue when included the family law book as a separate book in the civil code. Given the fact that family law as a closed, relatively independent area of law is most closely related to personal law relationships within civil law, Book 4, Regulating Family Law Relations, was placed in the civil code after books 2 and 3, Regulating Persons. On the one hand, this solution returned to the pre-1952 Hungarian traditions which considered family law as an integral part of private law. On the other hand, it reaffirmed the coherence and terminological unity by emphasizing the specificity and uniqueness of family law relationships. The committee proposal at the head of the family law book stated the principle of the protection of marriage and the family in relation to the fundamental law. In this way, it expressed that the rules of family law protect the family as a community and as a fundamental cell of society. The committee proposal also clearly intended to regulate the facto civil partnerships as a family law relationship, which was the result of a carefully considered compromise. It was based on the idea that private law should also follow social changes and that life partners should be legally protected also in respect of each other. This line of thought, however, now leads us to the second part of the presentation, the regulation of the family law status of non-marital forms of partnership cohabitation in the code. The incorporation of the family law status of certain forms of partnership into the civil code gave the legislator plenty to think about. In this context, the place of three forms of partnership in the civil code had to be found, of which the regulation of marriage in the family law book was quite clear. The most striking change was the quantitative and qualitative change in the matrimonial property regime. This is due to the social and economic changes over the past 60 years, which have been incorporated into the normative legislation. This part of family law legislation is very well done. However, how to regulate registered partnerships between persons of the same sex only concluded before the registrar or de facto partnerships involving cohabitation between persons of the same sex or different sex was not so obvious. In line with these issues, now I would like to talk about committee proposal on registered partnership and on de facto partnership, and after that, the concrete effective legal regulation. A decision of the Constitutional Court in 2008, which ruled that the creation of the legal institution of registered partnership for persons of the same sex is not unscathed and a constitutional marked a milestone in the regulation of registered partnerships. After and on the basis of the Constitutional Court's decision, Act 29 uh, of uh, 2009 on registered partnership was adopted, which is still in force. The law applies the rules on marriage also to registered partnerships as a general rule but they cannot bear their partner's name. Registered partnerships don't create a presumption of paternity. They cannot participate in assisted reproductive procedures together, and they cannot adopt a child together. The committee proposal for the new civil code intended to regulate the most important rules on the formation, termination, and family law effects of registered partnerships in the family law book without affecting the separate act. It was based on the concept that uh, when drafting a new private law code, it would be appropriate to integrate the private law rules, family law and inheritance law, applicable to registered partners into the family law book. 
De facto, civil partnerships were evidently not included in the original text of the 1959 Civil Code or the 1952 Family Law Act. This form of partnership was first normatively regulated in 1977, however, not in the Family Law Act, but in the Civil Code in the Contract Law section under certain contracts, specifically as a specific form of civil law partnership. This halfway legal solution had the legal consequence that the state care provided by public law rules was extended to the facto life partners, but in private law relationships, life partners were not entitled to family law rights and were not subject to family law obligations. These solutions left the weaker party, typically the woman, completely vulnerable, regardless of how many years of cohabitation they had, or whether or not the relationship has resulted in children. In the course of the expert work on the preparation of the new civil code, it became clear that this regulation doesn't correspond to the content of the civil partnership, nor to its social acceptance. Although life partners don't wish to take on obligations of marriage, they typically live as spouses with their children or only the child of one of them, raising a family. Over the years, several decisions of the Constitutional Court have dealt with the status of de facto civil partnerships, and it was clearly stated that the constitutional protection of the family applies not only to the family based on the marriage, but also to family life in the sociological sense. On, the basis, on this basis, the committee proposal laid down in the family law book the concept of de facto civil partnership based on actual cohabitation. However, the committee proposal didn't seek to give life partners the same supported status as spouses. In fact, the proposal only attached family law effects to civil partnerships that have lasted for at least 10 years or have resulted the birth of a common child and the life partners living together at least for one year. One of the family law effects was the maintenance of the life partner, which could have been claimed by the former life partner after the termination of the civil partnership. The other important legal effect was to provide the former life partner with the right to residence, provided the conditions specified were met. The committee proposal under certain conditions would also have granted the surviving partner a right of use until death based on the legal title of inheritance law of the shared dwelling and its features and fittings. The text of the committee proposal was submitted to Parliament, but uh, the smaller governing party was unable to accept either the proposal for the regulation pertaining to registered partners or the recognition of the family status of life partners. This would have risked the adoption of the entire civil code. As a result of the amendments, a significantly different family law regulation from the committee proposal was finally included in the code. Registered partnership was completely excluded from the code which was intended to regulate private law relationships in a uniform manner to such an extent that the provisions of the civil code don't even mention it in the definition of relative or among the impediments to marriage. It is only mentioned among the circumstances that exclude the existence of a de facto civil partnership. However, the fact is that the Special Act on Registered Partners contains a general reference to the fact that the rules on the marriage must be applied to registered partnerships subject to the exceptions laid down in the Act. Thus, it can be said that the Civil Code is wittingly or unwittingly the background law for registered partnerships. This is also supported by the decision of the Constitutional Court of 2021, according to which the interpretation of the law that doesn't exclude registered partners from the scope of close relatives 
can be accepted as constitutional. The legislator also changed the advice of the committee proposal on the regulation of de facto life partners. The provisions of the committee proposal which were incorporated into a coherent system were simply split in two and in such a way that the concept of life partner and its property consequences were placed in the 13th contract section of the contract law book. But the regulation of maintenance and the residence of life partners was placed in the family law book under the heading, the family law effects of civil partnership. A civil partnership can only have family law effects, maintenance and rights to residence if the life partners have a child born out of cohabitation lasting for at least one year. Therefore, if the life partners have no children in common, even if they have lived together for any length of time, raise the children of one of, or both of them, share the household or contribute it to each other's businesses, they are not entitled to the family law effects mentioned above. Legislative acts implemented without any drafting on the basis of amendments rarely stand the test of professionalism, and unfortunately, this is also true in this case. There are several questions that theoreticians and practitioners are still trying to answer. What are these? On the one hand, how can the legislator, between certain conditions prevail, attach family law effects to a contract under contract law as the legislator classifies a de facto civil partnership. On the other hand, the complete exclusion of registered partnerships from the code creates legal uncertainty in many cases. For example, an existing registered partnership is not listed as an impediment to marriage, although it should be. Similarly, a registered partner is not included in the definition of relatives, close relatives, regulated in the code either, although if the rules on spouses were to apply to them, they would in principle have to be included. Furthermore, the registered partner is not listed in the code as a legal heir either, even though according to the separate act, the inheritance law status of the registered partner is the same as that of the spouse. However, this is not clear from the inheritance law provisions of the civil code, which may be misleading. A further question is how the dual regulation of the facto civil partnerships can be reconciled with the fundamental principles of the family law book, which aim to protect families on the one hand and the weaker party on the other. The contradiction is reinforced by the fact that judicial practice before the civil code also took a different path in the assessment of de facto civil partnerships by classifying them as a family relationships. Among the, these, uh, it should also be stressed uh, that, family, uh, that, that uh, family legal relationships between de facto life partners must be settled fairly and taking into account that protection of the weaker party is uh, in asserting their uh, interests. Overall, it can be concluded that uh, the code system of, of rules on relationships is still a major challenge for law enforcers, especially courts, even after 10 years. But it should be stressed that the family law book is a very important landmark in the history of uh, family law. With this book and family law, the legislator has created the foundations of modern family law in Hungary, of which we can justly proud. Thank you very much for your kind attention.